OK, welcome. I would like to thank you all for attending my presentation today. I hope you are having a great time at the OSS Summit in Japan. In this session, I will talk about what to keep in mind when developing OSS in the current, current industry and share insight from our own experience of adapting our software to meet industry demands. I'm Takanori Tanaka, and I am representing the Platform SI Service Department at NEC Corporation. A graduate from Waseda University with a major in the international marketing and data science, I mix my technical expertise with global perspective. Now, I focus on leveraging that, that expertise to address the challenges of integrating the latest technologies into systems in the Japanese IT industry, while also striving to expand it globally. To start, let me introduce ourselves. Who are we? We are the team behind Exastro, a suite of open source software solutions. If you are interested in more details, in more information about Exastro, you can check our website from this QR code. Today, I want to focus on our first software, Exastro IT Automation, or ITA, and share how we developed it to meet the evolving industry standards. But before diving into the details, let me sorry. Let me give a quick overview of what it is. ITA is a tool that was created in order to automate and streamline manual tasks often found in system construction. And at NEC, where we work, hundreds of system engineers spend their days constantly constructing and configuring systems for clients, meaning that our team has the perfect environment to develop ITA. Before we start on the main topic, let's take a small moment, look back at the history of the IT industry to set some context. While I'm sure most of you are familiar with the cloud-centric industry we have today, let's take a step back at and look at what came before. Initially, machines and systems were tightly coupled together. One system was dedicated to each machine. In other words, uh, one system per machine. Even today, some legacy systems still operate this way, making it difficult to migrate them to the cloud. And as demands grew, systems became more complex, requiring multiple machines to work together. Exastro was born here at the golden age of the system integration, or SI business. It was designed with the purpose of optimizing the projects at hand by allowing engineers to automate repetitive and time-consuming tasks. Fast forward to where we are today, almost everything has transitioned to the cloud reflecting the industry's shift towards scalability and flexibility. But with this shift, new challenges emerged, particularly for open source software. Let's very briefly revisit, revisit the history of open source software. We used to live in a world 
where OS S and proprietary software were seen as rivals, competing for users and market share. But the landscape quickly changed with the rise of software as a service that is called SaaS. While SaaS are often paid, many of them now incorporate OS S into their solutions. This means we are no longer just competing with paid proprietary software. We are also navigating the growing SaaS trend. That brings us to the core of today's discussion. How have we ensured that idea remains competitive in the evolving market? Here is the very simple timeline of how ITA came to be. As I stated earlier, ITA was developed during the peak of the SI era business, before the cloud became popular. To help illustrate its evolution, we've created a metaphoric representation of the development. Actually, the different stages of exhaustive development can be explained using these three examples. Tent, house, and apartment complex. It started with an engineer simply wanting to optimize a personal project uh, he had been working on. As it was only a project for said engineer and no one else, we can compare it to a simple tent. It was mainly created to cater as a single person. But the software is only as strong as its richest component. So the engineer started a team working on improving this software to be able to optimize and automate on different projects and even on organization levels. What do we have now? Now we have something that resembles a house capable of housing a whole family, a building that can hold its own without being affected by its surroundings and can provide housing for a long while. The rumors of ITA being able to opt optimize systems spread, spread quickly. And they decided to release ITA version one as OSS. Fast forward to today, in the middle of the big cloud revolution, we made the decision to make ITA follow the industry trends and implemented the ability to share infrastructure in order to share over the cloud. This step was so big that we decided to completely rework the software, giving us ITA version two. So, how did ITA evolve? As the, as the industry trends and demands shifted towards cloud adoption, the expectations for OSS grew. People started wanting more from them. This shift drove us to develop ITA version two to meet these new demands. And this diagram illustrates Exastro's pipeline and how everything connects. We can see our software here in the middle and interacting with other tools and various pipelines to deliver the final product. It started out as a simple tool created by a single developer to help optimize his project. Today, ITA integrates with other OSS to optimize and automate a wide range of tasks, 
beyond system construction and operations. Let me talk about it in more detail about the main changes between version one and two. That is to say, this is about the changes made going from house to apartment, apartment complex in the metaphor I used earlier. And these are the main items of change. I will explain them in order. First, let's talk about multi-tenancy support. In version one, engineers and operators needed to install ITA separately for each tenant. However, we had to use one exhaustor per tenant, even if they were following the same guidelines. In addition, while the performance of each of the environments affect the others, they are managed differently. This point suggested that there were problems in terms of resources and system management. Therefore, in version two, we introduced support for multi-tenants, allowing multiple organizations and projects to be managed on a single ITA environment, greatly optimizing the resources being used. But as there was no way to realize this with ITA version one, we had to implement a concept called organizations in ITA version two. This feature allowed us to create multiple isolated spaces within the same ITA instance. Each organization, <coughs> each organization remains completely private and can be used by entirely different projects. In order to use the different applications within the exhaustor system, users must create an organization. We also introduced workspaces. These are smaller units within organizations that allow users that allow users to manage separate databases that can contain system, constru contain system construction and design information for automated tasks. This enables users to create distinct environments within the same project, such as for testing and production. And these are the two features, organizations and workspaces were essential to the development of ITA version two. Of course, no, no major change comes without its challenges. Let's take a look at some of the hurdles we faced during this shift. One of the, one of the early challenges was rethinking of how we managed applications. ITA version one contained a couple of applications that frankly were not widely used. Initially, we considered letting users choose which apps to activate in ITA version two. However, with multiple tenants sharing resources, even minor applications could have a significant impact on the performance. For example, if the user wants to use the OASE function, which is one of the ITA applications, the system requires a database. But if they don't need the OASE function, they are left with an empty database. It uses unnecessary resources, which affect the other users. So we opted 
to allow users to completely remove unwanted applications. Next, we had to rethink how ITA connects to other environments. In version one, ITA was typically installed directly within the target environment. This allowed for easier setups and avoided complex connection settings. However, to enable ITA's use as part of a SaaS, users needed to connect to their environments over the internet. That being said, allowing external software to connect to your own environment comes with potential security risks. To address this, to address this we developed an agent system that enables users to access Exastro from their own environment and execute jobs securely. These changes were vital for the multi-tenant approach we introduced with version two. As previously explained, we like to compare version one to a house. We are single families that lives here, lives there, shares resources without issues of who using the resources on what. On the other hand, version two is more like an apartment complex where the, each of the tenants or families have their own accounts. Imagine the parking space connected to the apartment complex. Only the families with cars need a uh, space for their car. Exastro functions largely the same. If the users want to use an app alongside Exastro, they must link their own licenses with it. In this way, ITA evolves to suit the purposes and environments in which it is used. And finally, we also developed ITA to align with NEC Blue Stella standards. We wanted, to, we wanted users to be able to use ITA as easily as possible, which is why we are also currently giving users the options to experience it. Uh, and ex through a paid cloud service came called Exaster IT Automation Cloud, this is in line with Brewster's mission of making advanced technology accessible to everyone. We are also proud to say that ITA is not only a service under Brewster, but also plays a role in delivering Brewster applications to users. What began as a simple tool has now evolved into a vital component of a larger SaaS ecosystem. That brings us to where we are today. Today, ITA has transformed from a simple OSS with the goal of wide adoption to a key component, supporting a much larger and broader brand and its ecosystem. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for joining me on our journey through ITS evolution. If anyone has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for listening.